ever do an examination of Al's Liu Li Shuo. Liu Li Shuo means speak fluently in China, so it is an application targeted with productive skills. And let's see that this presentation will contain four parts. The first is my introduction of this topic, we will come to an over, in, overview of Al's Liu Li Shuo, and then comes to evaluation and conclusion part. So first, let's see the timeline of computer-assisted language learning and mobile-assisted language learning. In 1997, Levy defined that call is the search for and study of applications of the computer in language teaching and learning. And in 2001, Chappelle and Levy put forward call pedagogy, which contains the first L2 input exposure. It also requires interaction, and linguistic production. With the rise of mobile devices, small screens are everywhere. So KH in 2013 defines that MAL is the use of mobile technologies in language learning, especially in situations where device portability offers specific advantages. And in 2011, Alice put forward the MAL principle among them, four are the most important. The first one is equitable use, and then flexible use, tolerance for error, and then instructional climate. We will analyze them later. So let's see artificial intelligence situations in foreign language learning first. As we all know, the shift from call to I call, we can also say intelligent call has been unstoppable and brought a significant change in the quality of student-computer interactions said Kenna and Mene in 2018. P summarizes that there are seven categories in applying artificial intelligence into foreign language learning. And in this presentation, we will not analyze them all. The focus is, is on applying AI-assisted language learning platform is one of the significant category among them. And within this class, it can also be divided into two classifications. The first one is the conventional graphical user interface with speech recognition, and also the language interface with dialogue function, said Lois in 2018. Actually, the first category, the conventional graphical user interface with speech recognition is the most popular one. The main reason lies in the fact that they are not that difficult to build to make learner to stake on different practices and make them in small chunks such as filling gaps, drilling, matching exercises. However, the drawback of this way is that they like enough creativity and individualized content usually. And now let's review some relationship among call, icon, and mall. Stockwell in 2013 has analyzed some relations among call, mall, and ML, which refers to mobile learning. So in this graphic, we can see that call has some overlapped with mall. Mall does not necessarily belong to call. And it also has some overlap parts with ML, mobile learning. And also, um, however, none of the researchers summarizes the Relations among call, I call also can be understood as AI assisted language learning and more. However, uh, they are independent concepts but also rely on each other inalienably. So you can see I call does belong to call and they also have overlapping some parts with small. And now we come to the, an overview of Al's Li Li Shuo. So actually, it is a commercial application created by Shanghai Liu Li Shuo Information Technology. Although it is an artificial platform under the category of conventional graphical user interface with speech recognition set lows in 2018, it still causes a new edge in targeting highly exam-oriented learning materials. It aims to improve two productive skills, including speaking and writing, combined with instant feedback on Elspin in some closed text. It also has mock exam and a test report with correction. And we can download it from this web page. So let's see the first 
function of this application specifically, it is called our speaking test simulation. And our interface is just like this. You can see a real examiner uh, videos. After the test, learners can get a third report with correction in terms of four band descriptors involving grammar, fluency, vocabulary, and pronunciation. So you can see a test report screenshot is just like this. You can get an overview and an advice and also um, uh, different points. And then let's see the second function is the courses of speaking and writing. However, it is fee-based. I think it deserves some payments. We should respect intellectual property as long as it's not that high. And you can see that those curriculum integrated with speech recognition. It contains filling gaps, drilling, matching activities, and translation. Actually, every module has pre-test and post-test with scoring and feedback to enable the learner to visualize the advancements instantly. For example, if we want to have a, a course related to improve the vocabulary of environmental issue, so first you would get an outspeaking test question about environmental issue, uh, such as how to uh, how to protect the environment, uh, etc., etc. And then you will get a score of reports. Usually, it's not that high, and it will point to you that you may have some disadvantages in your Discord dis discourse, and then you will go through those activities, including filling gaps, drilling, matching activities, translation, and at last, you will have the post test with the same question again. And this time, learners and users usually have a higher score so that they can visualize the advancements instantly. And then, we will come to the evaluation part. We will examine our social characteristics and our principles of call, ma, and AI. Call pedagogy put forward by Chappelle in 203, and also the four mall principles suggested by Alice, as we just mentioned. And now, we come to call pedagogy. As for the L2 input exposure, it really does well. Um, you can immerse in drilling of sentences, answers of L speaking of questions, proper related vocabulary matching, translation activities, and a video of L examiner in mock text. Those L2 input exposure, you can immerse in that language. And then, interaction lies in the feedback with scores and corrections in four different categories required by the official else. However, sometimes the correction is not accurate. For example, if you have some pronunciation of celebration, it doesn't have any mistakes, but sometimes you may uh, be overcorrected. So it's not that accurate sometimes. And third, when it comes to linguistic production, we have that kind of production within answering different topic questions in the pre-test, post-test, and some practice within every module as linguistic production. So it pushes us to have that kind of pr production. So let's continue to see some screenshots of reports. We can see in the grammatical range and accuracy part, you can have a little record of your audio and you have a correction next to it. For example, in a quantifier non agreement, uh, you may have some like mistakes within plural nouns or like singular nouns, etc. However, it is not that user friendly um, because for some elementary levels, they, they cannot know the meaning of quantifier non-agreement or like um, other professional other professional norms. So I think that those kind of feedback should be made into two versions, both in L2 and L1 for elementary levels, intermediate level, and also advanced level. And in lexical range screenshot, you can say that you can see that some learners or testers may overuse some common verbs, and this really fits into the demands in L's test. Learners should use less common verbs. And then we come to a more principles in L's literature. 
Uh, let's review it. it. Contains four principles: equitable use, flexible use, and tolerance for error. Instructional climate. So we can review the two definition of those four principles. Now let's come to the evaluation part. And actually, as for equitable use, many texts are generally designed for the accessible format to practice. So it's quite uh, it's quite easy to um, grasp those function. However, for some courses that are fee based, it's not that accessible for everyone, as long as you pay them. Yeah. So for the second one, flexible use, it does well in this part. It packs different knowledge points in terms of standards of scoring chunks. For example, you can receive a course related with improving your connectives, or just improve your vocabulary related to specific topic such as crime, environment, animals, people, etc., etc. You can also receive some courses to improve your grammatical tenses, uh, some awareness of it, etc., etc. And every text are designed with saying 15 minutes. However, if you want to get a higher score in a post-test, you may review it again and again or uh, to imprint those knowledge into your mind so that you can get a higher score. And for the third part, tolerance for error, it does not have a really good performance because learners can only be delivered four modules each day, maximally, and it claims that every learner can set their own levels and their own aims uh, or their own task days, etc., etc. Uh, they can in output an individualized study plan. However, um, when learners like setting different levels, actually, um, yeah, it's they still receive the same courses randomly, so it's not that individualized. And as for any instructional climate, it does not have any ideal performance still in creating instructional climate. For example, um, it fails to remind learners continuously have a daily practice or weekly practice. Mm. And also, um, it suggests that it may have some gamification design, such as leaderboard or competition to create a attraction of this application or the, uh, some interesting parts. And now we come to conclusion and recommendation. Actually, else Liu Li Shuo faced the core pedagogy and some principle of Mo, but some they, um, they don't do very well which endorse affordability for ever learning. And the most significant value of this application is combining the AI technology with exam orientation being more specific else test. And this is a promising future, I think, because a lot of, uh, we have a lot of standardized tests like TOEFL, ELSE, PET, and even college entrance examination in China and other similar tests in other countries. Those kind of tests are all boring, challenging, and tedious for those learners to uh, learn. So those kind of applications with AI technology and also uh, some interesting design or gamification design, it will help those students to gain interest and have better performance. Imagine they may just get addicted with learning those kind of standard tasks. They will definitely get a higher score. And the third part is some shortages such as tolerance of errors, innovative space, individualized content, and highly collaborative learning process. Sometimes this application will have false corrections toward learning speaking, which are not allowed learners to send immediate and efficient feedback to improve the feedback. So actually, um, those application or future um, designers of applications may can design some like individualized or personalized speech recognition system to test the learner's pace of discourse firstly and then they may have a more individualized feedback and also it does need to have a, a kind of uh, scheme that allow those learners to send immediate feedback to revise the report and at last, more individualized courses according to different levels and pace of learners and a better instructional climate with gamification design in exam or in applications are explorable in the future. 
And those are the references of this article. I really appreciate it for your time.